try as I may, I could never explain what I hear when you don't say a thing. The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. There's a truth in your eyes saying you touch of your hand says you catch me wherever I fall. You say best when you say nothing at all. Oh, all day long I can hear people talking out loud. Try as they may, they can never define what's been said between your heart and mine. The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me. The touch of your hand says you'll catch me wherever I fall. You say that when you say nothing at all. There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me. The touch of your hand says you'll catch me wherever I fall. You say it best when you say nothing at all. Truth in your eyes, the touch of your hand lets me know that you need me. You say it best when you say nothing at Turn back the clock and make sure the light defeated 
Those days are gone. Now I want you so much. The night is long, and I need your touch. Don't know what to say. I never mean to feel this way. Don't want to be alone tonight. What can I? Everybody loves the things you do, from the way you talk to the way you move. Everybody here is watching you, 'cause you feel like home. You're like a dream come true. But if by chance you're here alone. Can I have a moment before I go? 'Cause I've been by myself all night long, hoping you're someone I used to know. You look like a movie. You sound like a song. My God, this reminds me. Of when we were young, let me photograph you in this light, in case it is the last time that 
afternoon washish and sharan how do you feel as you are in front of the altar with these wedding garments excited wonderful and you are you also excited yeah the hymn that we sang is actually a psalm where the psalmist sings the praises of god and says i truly long for you and in the scripture we find how the longing of a man and woman for each other is compared to human longing to god and god longs for humans and human being longs for god and therefore it is a very very apt song that is chosen by our choir members as you are coming as a beautiful wedding march but at the same time singing the praises of god i am sure sharan longs for washes and washes for sharan and the day has come the day has come where you say yes our longing now has come to a kind of fulfillment by exchanging the vow and saying that yes you are my life partner you're after us that as you are come single as you go out from the chapel in the church you are no longer single but you are one yet two so that is the very purpose that you have come here my dear congregations here those who have come here to celebrate this great day of the wedding of washish and sharan as you are witnessing this marriage the first step of the marriage is to come to the church pray and that's the reason your prayers are very much necessary and therefore my dear people here who are here the parents and also the friends and family i ask you to pray throughout this mass that your prayer may strengthen the love that these young couple have for each other and that the love may grow so this is our wishes for you today this is true of our wishes and we pray god's blessings on you today is sunday and therefore we even though take the nuptial mass we also take the readings from the sunday and pray god's blessings on you 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Even though there are set readings for the marriage, since it is a Sunday, as I said, we are taking the readings of Sunday. And there is a powerful message in the readings, the three readings that we have from the Deuteronomy, from the letter of St. James, and also the Gospel of Mark. One message is that a genuine uh, requirement to follow the Lord. A genuine, true-hearted requirement. Not a, a ritualistic or I am following the religion because of my culture that has brought me in, taught me the religion, but rather my heart that is needed for following of the Lord. And also wedding mass also has the same message that I am following not because I want some life partner in life, if I want someone to choose someone in the world and begin to live, but rather a genuine love that you need to have, a love that makes you to commit, a love that makes you to understand, a love that makes you to sacrifice, a love that ultimately resembles the love of God. And therefore, I invite to all of you to join the Gloria, a singing of the praises of God on this beautiful day as we are here to celebrate this Eucharist. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. first reading, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, Now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you. 
and do them that you may live. And go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep co the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Keep them and do them, for that, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sights of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it, as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Whoever walks without fault, who does what is just, and speaks the truth from his heart, who does not slander with his tongue? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who does no wrong to a neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribe against the innocent? Such a one shall never be shaken. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? A reading from the letter of St. James. My dearest brethren, every good endowment and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in the affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The word of the Lord. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his. Alleluia, alleluia, glory to the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, glory to the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, glory to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, our Lord. Lord. Now, at that time, when the Pharisees gathered together to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of the disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, do not eat unless they have washed their hands, observing the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they have purified themselves. And there are many other traditions which they observe. The washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to to the traditions of the elders, but eat with hands defiled. And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? 
As it is written, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines and precepts of men. You leave the commandments of God, and you hold fast to the traditions of men. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a man which is going into him that can defile him. But the things that come out of a man are what defile him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, even slander, pride, and foolishness. All of these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What a wonderful occasion we all have the privilege of celebrating in today. Your eyes sparkle. I saw you yesterday, but today there's a unique sparkle in those eyes. And soon your cheeks are going to be aching because you won't stop smiling. But I want you to have a quick look at each other. Look and smile. See what I'm saying. And never forget this moment. Because this is something so very special that is happening here today. The person that you are looking at and at the marriage to that person amounts to a massive, wonderful, beautiful grace in your lives. Your spouse and the life with your spouse is not something that either of you just happen to deserve or earn. This is something far greater and this is a gift like no other, no other. Because the giver of this gift is God. This also implies then that your love for each other is not just any old infatuation with a member of the opposite sex, but the union of this love we have for each other, that you have for each other, must radiate God's love and the love shown to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, which is, as we know, the highest form of love that you can get. Now, the Greeks, quite a confused people, they have various words for love, but the one they refer to with the highest is agape love. And this is what we should all strive for in our relationships with each other. Agape love is the total giving of oneself without question, and expects nothing in return. And this, obviously, is the first challenge that we face. Because us old humans, we only enjoy giving if we're pretty certain we're going to get something in return. But if we regard that person that we're wanting to marry, that person that we love, we regard them with agape, it means that nothing that person can or will ever do will make us seek anything but his or her highest good. Though they may injure, they may hurt us, and they may insult us, we will never feel anything but kindness towards them. That is tough. Never feel anything but kindness towards them. If someone hurts us, we usually want to make sure that we can get even. We want to get back to them. And that is where in the gospel today it was teaching us that it's nothing outside there that makes us dirty. It's what is in here, what comes out of our mouths, what's in our thoughts. It means that this love that we have is not just an emotion, but it's a conscious commitment. It's an effort that we make because we love God and because we love one another. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It's not proud. 
It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and also always perseveres. Love that never fails. I want you to remember that passage. I want you to maybe read it to you every now and then. Eh? This is what Jesus wants us to share with each other. And I can assure you that it's never easy when two people, each with their own personalities, live together. But she says, Sharon, you're going to have difficult times. You're going to have disagreements. You have your own opinions. You have your own individuality. But it's how we handle those differences, how we speak to each other, how we react in times when there are disagreements. Learn to be thankful for your spouse and your marriage, not just today, but every day. Look at your spouse with the love that you feel today, in the months and the years that lie ahead, and especially on those days when you think, but wow, what have I done? Think back to today. Think back to the promises that you're making, and think back that this is that gift from God. It's not just another person. This is somebody very, very special. Be thankful to God whose idea it was in the first place. For today God looks upon two of his beloved children and does great honor to each by entrusting them with the other. This honor and trust are meant to continue throughout your lives together. Sharon and Vash, when you truly realize that your marriage is first and foremost a gift from God, only then will you learn to love one another as I have loved you. You remember those beautiful words from Jesus? One commandment he gave, he said, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And when we realize this great gift that we have, we will love one another like he loved us. My friends, through gratitude for your marriage, you can see it in the light that is forever new. Gratitude for your marriage to each other will enable you to live with one another gently, humbly, quietly, lightheartedly, and you will experience so many moments of communication, patience, forgiveness, and moments of life made new, moments of grace, and moments of that deep, warm love. You will shortly be lighting the unity candle. We also call it the nuptial candle. And this is where the two of you will show publicly that you're leaving your existing homes, you're leaving your parents' homes, and you two together are coming together as one, one new unit. But also we're taking those two candles representing the two of you and coming together in that nuptial candle representing that there's three people in this union. For without the Lord Jesus Christ, no union is going to work. Our Lord is there reminding us that he is there. He is there to guide, to love, and to help. And I want you to light a candle regularly. Maybe El Cupid wasn't so doff when he said, we're under a romantic meal, have a candle. He was subtly telling us that to have true men and true love in our lives, we need Jesus there. And if it's a candle that reminds you of today, do that. Don't leave it up to her, though. You set the table and you do something special, but with a candle. Then she knows that you've been in the dog box. <laughs> eh? Think of times like that and do something special to really make this union something that you'll never forget. When you leave here today as newly married, a newly married couple, your new life will begin and the new challenges will be there. But if you both take just one little thing with you, and that is that our Lord Jesus is always at your side, he's always with you, and he will never desert you. And no matter how big the challenge seems that you're facing together, you may feel all alone and deserted. 
turn to our Lord, turn to him in prayer, and he will, you will quickly realize that he is there. Now, my friends, I mentioned that you're going to have times when there's unhappiness between the two of you or disagreements. Vash, this is when you've got to step up again. I want you to get two chairs, put them facing each other, sit in the chairs and look at each other and hold hands, and hold hands tightly, and talk about what the actual problem is. And let me tell you, by holding hands, you create those lines of communication because it's more often than not that simple communication is the cause of the problems. We don't talk to each other. Let that love flow and talk to each other and you'll find quickly that a massive problem just dissipates. But Vash, there's a second reason why you hold hands because she can give you a backhand so quickly if you say the wrong thing. <laughs> so just remember today, hold hands lovingly and sort out those problems with that love that's been given to you today. Bless you. Vashish and Sharon, this is the most important time for you because from this time onwards, your life is going to change totally. You're no longer two, but one. And this happens within the Eucharist. And before I ask you to exchange the vow for uh, the wedding um, celebration, I, uh, I want to tell you the importance of this uh, taking place in the Eucharist. Even though the whole Eucharist is so important, everything that happens in the Eucharist is so important, the most precious time is consecration time. Not because miraculously the bread and wine is changed into the body and blood of Christ, but because a true celebration of Christ giving as a bridegroom to the church is recalled at that time. It is a, a true happens that every Eucharist, Christ is the bridegroom, the church, is the bride. A perfect giving of Christ to the bride that the church is happening. Now, in the marriage, Eucharistic consecration time and along with that, even this time is most precious. You as groom and you as bride, you give yourself completely to one another as Christ has given to you. So are you ready to take, accept this great responsibility upon yourself? Okay, then we will begin this a wonderful exchange of uh, vows. And the people who are here, this is also important for us to participate fully here. I request you to stand so that you also are participating in this uh, most important time of Vashis and Sharon. Yeah. And also the two witnesses can also come forward so that you really see what happens here and bear witness to their marriage. It is not just a legal thing that you are taking upon yourself, but rather it is that taking the name of the congregation, you say these people are changing the vow and they are ready to live their life together. So there's a responsibility that you as witnesses are taking. My dear friends, and especially Vashish and Sharon, you have come together in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of church's minister and this community. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He has already consecrated you in baptism and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intention. Vashish and Sharon, have you come freely and without reservation to give yourself to each other in marriage? I do. I do. Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your life? 
Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I do. I do. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, I ask you to join the right hand, look at each other, and declare your concern before God and his church. Will you, Sharon, take Varshia a present for your lawful husband, according to the right of the Holy Mother, the Church? And will you, Varsh, take Sharon here present to be your wife, according to the right of the Holy Mother, the Church? Right now. I call on these persons here present to witness that I, Basish Pata, do take the Sharon Sunny to be my lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as we both shall live. Can we just let go and let the blood circulate? <laughs> call on these persons here present to witness that I, Sharon Sunny, do take the Vasish Pata to be my lawful wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as we both shall live. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessing. What God has joined, men may not divide. Yeah, you can again leave so that. <laughs> okay, now another important thing that we have is the blessing of wedding rings. And along with that, we have also blessing of Thali. Now, to those people who are not aware of the exchange, uh, tying of a Thali, it is very, very precious thing because in the Jacobite rite, it is also the Thali is tied or prepared out of the seven thread taken from the sari, which is used for the marriage and which is just creating a kind of bond and also commitment, and it is by the groom to the bride. It is tied while the priest is holding the tali, and by which they tie a knot so together, so tight, so precious, and then they say, hereafter was you are totally mine, and thus they become one. And therefore, we bless the ring as well as the tali. Almighty ever living Father, as you have created us in your own image and likeness, you also have share, asked us to share the love which resembles the love of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, a total self-giving. And these rings are a sign of that love, only an external sign of inner commitment. And this tali is also a sign of external love, of inner commitment that the washes and Sharon, who are exchanging the ring and tying this tally, may experience the Trinitarian love that you have called in the newborn, new love, where they are invited to form a family, and thus you may be with them always, strengthening their love. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Ashish, now I want you to place the ring on Sharon's left hand and remember to repeat the words and say, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brothers, to come forward, please. We're going to do lighting for the Lady Candle. Ask them to hand the candles to this, their children. Then together they light the new candle, the unity candle. Blow them out and hand them back to your parents. Together hold on to that. Raise it high and show the congregation. then there's something I'm going to ask you to do which you've never done before. Will you please kiss your bride, your now husband and wife? We continue our Eucharist and we, as you are here, and also um, let us profess our faith that God may help us to express our faith and live according to that. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten, begotten Son, Son of God. God. Born of the Father before, before all ages, ages, God from God, light, light from, from light. light. True to God, God from true God, true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we pray for various intentions. We pray for the church. As the church celebrates the Eucharist, where we truly remember or experience Christ giving himself to us in the perfect union as the bride gives to the bridegroom and bridegroom to the bride. We pray, Lord, strengthen the bond and love of the church that we may be able to truly profess your love throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Vashis and Sharon who have come here and now they are husband and wife. We ask your divine grace and blessings on them so that they may be able to build their family according to your will. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for these two family, the family of Vashish and Sharon, our now relatives, that their bond of love may increase and the parents may set a good example to their children and thus their love may always be according to your will. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all married people that they may truly understand the commitment that deserves and also the love that they have for each other may bear witness to the love of God and as Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they may truly set a good example to ins uh, inspired by the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. We also pray for young men and women who look for true good life partner that God may lead their life and thus they may be able to find a right life partner in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray also for your own personal intention, for your family. Almighty, ever-living God, creator of the universe, maker of man and woman, as we today bear witness to the sacrament of marriage of Vashish and Sharon, we ask your divine grace and blessings on all who are gathered to witness this marriage feast. Send your spirit upon us and inspire us to love one another. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with bond that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we see. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together with love. Made for the glory of God, purchased by His precious Son. Born with the right to be free, for Jesus. 
Jesus the victory has won. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to Lord Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Let's all stand. We receive a prayer, Lord, the offering made on the vocation of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all your saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this says the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in my memory. The mystery of faith. Spread and through this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our spouse, blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith your and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Archbishop Booty, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Vashis and Sharon, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection they may always be faithful in their lives. To the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Vashish and Sharon is a special prayer for you. And as we pray this prayer for you, we ask the grace come to you. And I ask you to kneel down. And I request the congregation here to pray with the priest to pray of the bride and bridegroom that they may truly experience the love of Christ to the church and thus they may be able to understand as they grow together, how they are supposed to love one another. Let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love 
by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, those he has joined in the holy covenant. Let us pray in silence. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the blood flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Sharon and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband worship and trust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint her to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, they may bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of yours for which they hope they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. You can stand. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Here is Jesus Christ who truly came down to, the, to us to teach us how to love. The Lamb who was slain for our sake, blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that, you, that should you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
please be seated. We'll be distributing the communion. All those who are practicing Catholics can come forward. We'll be distributing the both the sides and those who are receiving can come forward. Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to present her as a holy and spotless bride for himself. Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, the eternal Father, give you of one heart in love for one another that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world of, to God's charity, 
so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the masses and Thanks be to God. Congratulations, Vashish and Sharon. I'm sure that you are so happy now and your joy may be always complete. And as uh, Deacon said in the sermon that it is with Christ that your union has to be strengthened. And we pray that wishes for you that your love for one another may always grow. May God bless you. And as parish community and uh, Father Ryan is here, the choir members here, the fat, the sacristan is here and Deacon Keith are here. Wish you happy married life. God bless you. And thanks, sincere thanks for the choir members and Father Ryan for helping us to live stream. So now we have the um, signing of the documents as we sing the last hymn. shall be showers of blessing this is the promise of love there shall be seasons refreshing sent from the savior above showers of blessing showers of blessing we need mercy drops round us up shall be showers of blessing precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys sound of abundance of rain showers of blessing showers of blessing we need mercy drops round us up showers we please 
shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead.